thought I would make a video talking about what I've got going on and what's coming up in the new year on this channel. Uh, you can call this a bit of a year-end review, even though I'm not going to go into specifics on the projects that I did. All those videos are there. And there's actually 50 of them. I made 50 videos on this channel in 2023. So lots of content there to go through if you're into that. And, you know, at least three of those were projects. I can't recall what the third project was. Well, the first one was my side speakers, the ones that I use here every evening to replace the first reflection off the side walls. They're positioned over on the side of the room on each side. And uh, those are working great. That was a project that I did about, I don't know, nine months ago, something like that. So they've been here working ever since. While I was doing that, ah, yeah, now I remember number three. I was also building the amp that powers those. And that's sitting right there now too, working every evening. And then the third big project for 2023 was this thing that I've got my hand on. And I want to talk about this in particular because I just went through about, I don't know, four evenings of work on it where I replaced the amp boards. Now, let me tell you what happened there. Um, the design that I, I came up with in the beginning was good, except for the thermal performance. I assumed that the two diodes in the thermal track transistors, just two outputs, so two diodes, would be enough for temperature compensation as the, you know, as the heat sink or the amp heats up, the current is supposed to drop to maintain that temperature. And they weren't working that way. What was happening was the amp was getting too hot, not to the point where it was running away, but something to be concerned about. I wouldn't want to leave it on overnight. I could get up in the morning, find it smoking <laughs> or something like that. So I fixed that a few months ago by adding, well, bypassing those diodes and, and adding a VBE multiplier and a small circuit board that bolts right onto the heat sink in between the outputs. And I did that for all nine amplifiers that are in here or were in here, I should say. And that worked. That was a perfect fit, uh, fix. I had no problems with it from then on, but I didn't like that fix. It was a bodge and I, I, you know, okay, let me, let me tell you something about when you start building something like this, your intention is not to build something that's just good enough. It's your intention is to build a Ferrari, you know, a real, you know, master work. In other words, something that's really worth the time because this takes a lot of time to build, design and build. So your intention is to build something that's really the best you can. And that fix that I did, even though it fixed the problem, didn't fit in with that. So what I did about a month ago, I sat down, I redesigned the app board to include the VBE multiplier. I made another couple of changes on there that I won't go into in this video, but then I ordered the boards and I systematically swapped out all of the ones that are on here. I took the components off the old ones, put them on the new boards, put them in. Also, in doing that, I restored it to a 10 channel amp. If you can recall, when I first built this, brought it down here, setting it up, I dropped a screwdriver inside and blew the, the, trans, uh, the, the amplifier board on this end over here. So I replaced that. Now it has 10 channels again. So it's the way it's supposed to be. Now I'm just going to quickly flick it on to let you hear what I've got going on. You hear a thump. That click is the relays turning on for these speakers. The thump that you heard wasn't from these speakers. It was from the subwoofers. That's because I've got the two active crossover boards for the subwoofers inside here. 
but I didn't add the cutout relays for them because they weren't supposed to be in here. I just put these in here in the meantime until I figured out what I was going to do. And I have figured out what I'm going to do. So I'm going to talk about that next. I need to build a kind of a control box slash preamp that will have these two boards in there for the subwoofers. The subwoofers are in my front wall, by the way. They're infinite baffle. This thing was made specifically for these four-way uh, open baffle speakers. And they have active crossovers inside. One for, you know, four for, four for this speaker and four for the other one. You know, four on that side over there, four over here. But they also got those two for the subwoofer, which aren't supposed to be in here. So I'm going to take those out, put them in this control box slash preamp, and that will have uh, some features that I, I don't have here. First of all, it will, it will take care of the mess of wires that I still have happening because I've got output from the computer that's coming up and it's splitting off. Like it's going into this and it's splitting off and it's going to the uh, other smaller amplifier that I made for the side speakers. Also, it's splitting off and going down to the subwoofer. Well, it's actually coming out of the back of this into the subwoofer amplifier. And it's also running down to the back of the room where I've reestablished the Hafler circuit. Except this time I'm using two speakers instead of one and I like that a lot better. With that set up, I'm working. It's like I'm in a big bubble of sound here in this room. And that is being fed from a long RCA cable down to my Yamaha receiver that is also uh, sending a signal to the Class D amplifier you see sitting on top that is powering the small subwoofer underneath it and also the bass shaker that's in my chair. So I want to consolidate all those functions, the Hafler thing, the bass shaker, um, active filter, and you know a separate sub for back there as well, all in this control box. And, and that will match that small amplifier in size and, and style, except it'll have um, more buttons on the front. It won't have any meters. It'll have two switches. One switch will be power. Another switch will defeat the tone controls. Also, it'll have bass and control, uh, bass and treble control, volume and volume for the Hafler, like the rear, and volume for the shaker on the front panel. So I'll be able to adjust those more conveniently than I can now. Okay, so that's that's coming up, and I've started to design that. I can't say when it's going to happen, but it won't be too long. That'll be a homemade circuit board, fully homemade box and all that. So pretty intensive build. And I also <laughs> have to finish this, but I want to wait until I get those subwoofer boards taken out. I need to build, uh, like build the top. I have a good design already for it and build the front. So that'll be coming up as well. I'll be finishing this, wrapping it up. Also, I am supposed to finish my subwoofer amplifier. That's still sitting down there working every day. Never gets turned off, sitting down there. And uh, I'll get to that too, I hope. It's just not high on my priority list because it's sitting down there. It's not hurting me. You know, it's mostly finished. It's, it's working. That's the main thing. Uh, the other thing is the... Um, the speakers that I started not too long ago, the coax array, I'm still kind of, well, I'm, I'm, I'm stopped a little bit on that because I, I, my original idea was to go with that vinyl wrap stuff. So I ordered that and I tried it out. And after struggling with that and then tearing it for like for an hour and, and actually peeling the whole thing right off, just the base plate for the speaker, I said this is not worth it, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try to use that. Instead, I painted them a matte black, and it looks good. But now I'm thinking what I'll do is I will veneer them. I have enough walnut veneer, so that's what I'm leaning towards now. 
except I'll leave the base black and I'll just do the just do the uh, the sides and and the top and the front where the port is right underneath the oak baffle. So yeah, that's the uh, tentative plans for the future, 2024. It's here almost. So this will most likely be the last video on this channel for this year. But like I said, I made 50 <laughs> other ones on this channel. You probably haven't seen all of them. I get comments from people that are just commenting on the video they're watching and they don't seem to realize that there are other ones that go with it. Um, I said this on my other channel a while, like a few years ago. This isn't a movie, what's happening on this channel. It's more like a series. So to know exactly what I've got going on and, and my position on things, it's best to watch all the videos and then you'll get the whole story. You'll get the context, in other words, and you won't be um, left with the idea that uh, this guy's crazy and he doesn't know what he's talking about. Well, sometimes I don't know what I'm talking about. You know, sometimes I make mistakes. But people, okay, the thing about mistakes is if you, the people that don't make mistakes don't do anything. So I'm a person that does stuff. So I make mistakes and I try to correct them and I try to own up to them. And that's the reason why I mentioned the problem I had with the amplifier here. All right. I'm not proud of it. I'm just saying that that's the way it is. But the way I look at mistakes is that they're a learning process. And le the thing I learned here was not to assume. Like, this is a lifelong lesson for me. I make too, way, way too many assumptions on things. So not to assume important things. And I just assumed that the amps would track properly when I designed them first. And they didn't. And I had to fix it. And then I had to do the big fix that actually cost a few bucks. It wasn't too expensive, though. I think the circuit boards are like 20 bucks for all 10. And then, like I said, I did manage to replace the blown one that I, you know, messed up before with another mistake. 